My name is Jean Trout and I'm a member of the Art Under the Spire Committee at First and Franklin Presbyterian Church here in Baltimore. Um, over the years, we've had many exhibits in the chapel at First and Franklin and uh, I have realized that there is an awful lot of very talented people in Baltimore. And it's been uh, a dry spell during the pandemic um, and then uh, we decided that doing it over Zoom was the best way to present it. Maybe the only way to present it, but it's the best way for us to present it. So that's what we're doing. Our first person is Nancy Valk, who um, has been painting for many years and her style has changed and developed over the years and it, it's beautiful. So I... Um, Rather than me saying anything more about her, I'm going to let you do it for yourself. Okay. okay. Um, well, welcome. Thanks for making the time and uh, trying out this sort of virtual walkthrough. Um, we really, we really appreciate it. I know a lot of people have been anxious to see it coming, and so. Why don't we step in and get started? Yeah, this is fun, Ron. Um, the most interesting thing about this show for me was that the op it was hung the last week of, or the middle week of, of March, um, and the opening was supposed to be the 15th. Um, and the first time I saw the show was last week or the week before when Taylor took me through, because <laughs> I never <laughs> saw the show hung. And Jeannie Trout, as you all love Jeannie Trout, she um, curated the show. So the paintings are ones that she picked from my studio. We had a lot of choices to make. Um, and I think she picked a, a very nicely integrated group. So that's fun. Most of these are on something called UPO, Y-U-P-O, which is a plastic. Um, and they're on a, and it, they're, I painted acrylic on the plastic. There's one, and I will point it out when we go by it, that's on clayboard, um, which is a much, uh, it's a bigger surface, but the but the way they um, the way the paint takes takes on that is similar to the way the paint takes on the upper. So we'll start right here. Taylor will squeeze us in tight there. Um, this, as I said, this is acrylic paint on yuppo, and a, a lot of these, and we'll go through the ones that that are connected to each other, have were inspired by a guy named Pierre Soulage as. Um, S-O-U-L-A-G-E-S, -E who is um, a Parisian painter who's probably in his 90s now. He's been painting forever. Um, and I just, I haven't actually ever seen his work in person, um, but I've looked at all of his stuff and I've read everything about him because I really was inspired by him. So if you go in, can you go in a little closer, Taylor? Okay, so these are, I, I painted an underneath painting um, with all the orangey brights and the colors there. And then I went over it with black, and then I scraped some of the black away to bring the colors from underneath out. Um, and then so let's move around to the next one that looks like Solange Taylor and see how they do with that. We're going to skip these. So Nancy, could, could you describe the differences between the two? It sounds like there's two different um, like canvas types or styles that you're using. Is that correct? Yes. Um, this, again, this one is on the Yuppo. As I said, this is a plastic sheet and it's done very similarly to the one that you just looked at. Um, and I, I just like the quality of the light coming through the dark and uh, it's kind of mysterious, um, but it's also got a little bit of geometry to it. Um, and then we can go to the next one. Hun. And the next one is the one that is not done on the Yuppo. Taylor, if you go up close, you can see that on the edge there's a, a board. So this is a piece of something called clay board, which is a very, it's, it's actually is clay, which has been ground, 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 ground. So it's almost like porcelain fine. Um, and then they put it on masonite. I don't know how they attach it to the masonite. And then it has, and behind it has um, structure. So this is a much heavier painting but it's, again, I, I was using the same process with this one as I was with the others. I think this one's 30 by 30. I think the others are, are 26 by 40, I think, anyway. 
All right, let's go right along Taylor, to the next one. And this again relates to the soulage guy. Um, and Taylor does have, I sent Taylor some um, photographs of Soulage's work so that he can, you can add some of that to the end, right? Say again, yeah, I, I did send a piece of pottery because that's how I started. I was a potter for 25 years and now I've been painting for 25 years. So I broke my leg very badly. Um, so I had to stop making pots. So I started painting. So, all right, honey, the next one. Now this one, yeah, that's the one right there. Okay, again, this is a soulage type painting. It's, it's a, a, with, again, underpainted, um, and then a lot of scraping and getting the color of the way I want it. And there's some, sometimes I spray with, just with water from a spray bottle and lift um, with paper towel or with a scraper or whatever. Um, and this again is acrylic on Yapo. And if you look closely, yeah, you can see there's, it's very subtle. Um, and that's one of the, it's hard to see it here exactly, but it's very subtle and there's a lot of movement in there that isn't apparent when you just glance at it from a distance. That's good, Taylor, that looks great, honey. Really good. See all the, see where all the scraping and that there's still black left, so. Uh-huh. All right, let's go back and do those. There are two or three landscapes that we skipped over because they didn't, this is a landscape right here. Um, stones and, again, and water. Yeah, stones and water. <laughs> um, I did put in my bio thing. I grew up in Ithaca, New York with tons and tons and tons of gorges and water and rocks everywhere and it very much influenced um, how I look at things. So this is, yeah, stones and water. All right, we can go keep going. Am I going too fast, Taylor, or is this okay? No, this is great. Good pace. Okay. Good, okay. Now this guy, come in closer, closer, closer. All right, all right. Now I can see. Okay, this is just another, it's kind of halfway between the landscapes and the soulage. There's a lot of, again, underpainting and scraping through. Um, it's kind of looks like you're moving into a space, you're going into a space. Um, it could almost be a, I don't know, a cathedral in there. <laughs> so, oh, thanks, Taylor. That's great, honey. See that now I can see how much color is in there. Lots going on. And then lots of uh, over scraffito kind of stuff on top to give it some more depth. Um, but th that's great, Taylor. You can really see the colors. Huh? Look some good. of the beads um, almost look like dancers from uh uh what is it is that a matisse painting that i'm thinking of yes yeah they do don't they <laughs> yeah all right so now we're back to solage and solage all right this again it is a landscape but it's also got some um, abstract functions um, spots on top squares rectangle squares on top and move into that one a little closer to the I think there's a lot of texture. If you can see in the background, there's a lot of different colors and a lot of texture. Um, there, see, looks very watery, skyy, sort of, uh, actually it looks like Monet's water lilies. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. And the, I think the two pieces, I don't know, can you tell Taylor, are the two darker pieces, are they glued on or are they part of the same? Can you tell? Were we talking about the um, no, 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 right darker right pieces or? No, the one you're just looking at. See in there? I see the two, the, the rectangles. So these are, are two. Square. Are they taped on? Applied. Or, or are they all the same? Um, it looks uh, seamless to me. Okay, fine. Then they're not. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I cut, you know, sort of make collage things, but I couldn't tell from here if it was. And as we put this show up how many months ago and I make a lot of paintings, I wasn't really sure. All right, we can go to the next one. Again, just a very, very simple landscape. But what I like about this one, come in tight again, Taylor, and the texture on the left, as you can see, is very metallic. There's a lot of silver paint and some gold paint in there. And the other side is, then there's a nice little bit of blue to pull the two sides together. And then the other side doesn't have a lot of the same kind of uh, um, depth, but it's 
but it's again, it's very um, metallic. Can you see that? Can you see it, Taylor? I can. Yeah, good, okay. All right, now we go to the other side of the room, right, sweetie? Let's take a walk. Okay. Is another one that, that I really got influenced by Soulage on this one. Um, and I, what I really like, at well, first I like all the colors and all the running of things together, but the intersections where some of the, there's some spaces going and then there's also where they're touching each other. So they're just kind of kissing. Yeah, that's good. That's a really good deal. Thank you, hon. Makes a big difference. So you can see all the colors. Again, there's a lot of metallic going on here. And the, where they are just kind of kissing, I think makes a wonderful intersection. And that, and that gold line there with the black things in it. So, yeah. And this is Anyapa. Um, and as I said, um, Taylor has a few, few pictures that I sent him of Solage's work. And, um, and I sent him some pictures of Richard Serra because I got some down at the end that, look, that remind me of him. All right, this is a landscape. Um, sort of dark and gloomy. It might look like Oregon does right now. Kind of small. Looks like shadows in the lake. Um, go in a little tighter on this one too. See what we got. I'm having a good time looking at the show myself, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. That doesn't, it looks like a Bryce Canyon or sky over water. Or got a lot going on. And that's on Yuppo, I think. Pretty sure you can touch it, Taylor, and see if it's if it's paper or if it's that plasticky stuff. Feels um, plastic. Oh wow! Plastic. Yeah, then that's yep. Okay. That's the that orange is the color of the 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 sunsets that we've been having with all the <laughs> California wildfires. That's I looked at it and thought, oh my god, I'm painting. Haunting. Very very haunting. All right, this again is, you know, related to the one on the other side of the landscape. And again, kind of from my thoughts were Solage, just, to, you know, when you're painting, um, you're really having conversations. You're having conversations with yourself about what you're doing. And you're having conversations with your materials. Um, so what you're painting on makes a huge difference. What you're painting with makes a huge difference. Um, so and what, what happens with me is when I run into somebody whose work I really love, it's, I call it, it's conversations with that painter. I'm looking at what they're doing, I'm thinking about it, and I'm thinking about, well, what, what, what's my interaction with this? What's my voice going to change this into? Um, so that's kind of what the process is. And I was a um, potter for all that time. And so much of what I really love is the surface, the, the pots, the glazes, and I feel like my paintings have definitely um, taken from that work and, and, and done more things with it, done other things with it. But the pottery did affect that. Okay. So for on. people viewing at home, Nancy's bio is available in the description of this video. Um, but Nancy, maybe you can um, just uh, narrate some of that, that bio for us. Anyway, you've been mentioning it already that you have a long history of being a potter and that there was a, an illness or an injury that sort of caused you to have some time to refocus your skills on a another medium is right. that correct yes i broke my leg skiing when i was in my early 40s and i really did a job on it and i, I was in a wheelchair for a long time and it just happened that polly mitchell who many of you probably know uh, lived across the street from me and she had an art school at, in her house across the street so i just said to her i cannot sit here day after day, you have to do something with me. <laughs> so he wheeled me over there and I ended up spending five years um, learning how to draw and paint and watercolor and oil. And, and I was teaching watercolor at Mitchell School later on. And then I taught from my own studio for, I guess about seven or eight years. Um, and then um, I, I had another injury. <laughs> so. I stopped teaching, but I'm still painting. And I'm doing a lot of this kind of stuff still, and I'm doing a lot of portraiture. Again, most of my portraits these days are in watercolor on Yepo. So, and it's, it's, it's a very challenging um, surface because it doesn't absorb any of the 
of a, any of the watercolor. The watercolor sits on top. Now the acrylic sits on top too, but not in, in, not in the same way, because watercolor, usually you think of it as sinking into the painting. So there's nothing to sink into here. So that's so interesting that you use the word sinking into the the paper that that you know there's there's so many different verbs that you use for applying uh, colors um, to materials you know you think just you know there's only one of you know painting as a brush paint on something that's just flat and it sort of absorbs <laughs> it but you know the, the, the you know the, even the word that you use of sinking for for watercolors you know you know, immediately makes me think of that like slow kind of outward growing um, oh. thing of, you know, even if like you have like a, you know, a fresh Sharpie that you leave the tip on a piece of paper, you can just watch it kind of just uh, the capillary action through the paper. Right. That's, that's really fascinating. That's why I'm saying it really is painting is a very interactive. I mean, you know, I, uh, with these things, I paint on a flat table, big flat table. And you know, there's paint everywhere. I'm throwing it around. I'm dripping it. I'm picking it up. I'm doing, so it's a very physically, it's very active. It's very fun. So, mm -hmm. all right, let's try the next one. I don't. You have to go in close on this one, honey. I can't figure out what's going on. <laughs> okay. Oh, we've got. Oh, we're in the sky. We're looking down at the fires and the roads, right? <laughs> 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 it might that is what it looks like. <laughs> the, obviously, the fires are on my mind. Anyway, yeah, I haven't got much more to say about that one. This one is another, obviously, a, it's kind of a seascape rather than a landscape. You can kind of see where the um, water is meeting the sky. Um, and moving towards you. We have a, a house on Cape Cod. And we spend a lot of time up there. So I, a lot of my landscapey stuff is over the water at the Cape. Okay. Can we take a look at a, another seascape uh, titled piece that was a vertical division rather than a horizontal one? Right, the one that's opposite you on the other wall. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, they're very, they, they're very related to each other, yes. So, do I have prices there? <laughs> <laughs> there are. <laughs> Good. All right, now this painting is on paper. And, and so it, the paper, as we, I just said, is very absorbent. But this is acrylic, this isn't watercolor. This is acrylic on paper, but the paper does absorb the acrylic. And if you can come in close to this one, this one was very much inspired by uh, Richard Serra. I don't know if any of you guys love Richard Serra, but I love his work. I probably would have, if I'd been younger and stronger, I probably would have liked him in a sculptor at some point. Um, but this, his work is, he's the one that does those big, huge steel things that you can walk through. You get, it's like a, a labyrinth and you walk through his big sculpture. Um, but I love his, I love his drawings. I like the way he uses his materials. Um, I, I think he's very sensual. And at the same time, really, he's very, very powerful, strong, strong artist, very strong work. So, and I think there's another one, isn't there on the, to the right of that, Taylor, that also is a circle? Yeah, again, that's on paper also. And that's, again, again that was, Richard here. I did a whole series of circles and all kinds of different things and see how, look at all the textures. You're doing a great job, Taylor Moon, and this looks like the moon, honey. <laughs> it does yeah. sort of have these like, it looks like a, like a Hubble Space Telescope photo. Yeah, doesn't it? It really does. <laughs> so, all right, and then there's one to the left, which I can't remember what that one is. All right, I'll go in tight on that one too. This is another one of the, you know, this is another forest fire, isn't it? Look at it, oh my gosh. Looks like a lake and fire along the edge of the lake. Some sky, some trees. Yeah. So it, it, this has been fun because as I said, um, Jeannie picked these paintings out, I don't even know, January probably. So I hadn't seen them for a long time. So it's nice to 
walk around with it with you guys and look at them. Okay, are we done or we have more? I think we've done it. Good, honey.